Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now October 7th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker saga, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, of course Bob Iger and Bob Chapek and exactly what they all have to offer for the next couple of years in comparison to what we already received by of course the Kathleen Kennedy era as I like to call it. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now that is one thing about this new Star Wars universe is that they already have over 10 years worth of Star Wars material in the works. You know, we got a lot of characters getting expanded including Ahsoka Tano, Ezra Bridger, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker even, as well as Ben Solo. I mean the list goes on and on. Disney Plus is going to be the ultimate destination of expanding those core characters, while the movies, by the way, are really going to expand the Star Wars franchise into something brand new as well. So when we go ahead and take a look at The Rise of Skywalker, obviously this film had a lot of issues going on behind the scenes for nearly an, an entire year, mind you, throughout all the different phases of reshoots and rewrites that went through many different cuts of the movie and different segments of the film that were deleted by Kathleen Kennedy. You know, it really isn't all that much of a surprise the fact that Kathleen Kennedy had issues with what J.J. Abrams, George Lucas, and let's not even forget about Chris Terrio, what they were working working on together as a team and how Kathleen Kennedy was very much unhappy with how episode 9 was beginning to turn out. However, a lot of fans have been very curious about what could have been when it comes to the original versions of episode 9 that actually used a lot of different segments for the film before they were deleted by Kathleen Kennedy in 2018 and throughout the year of 2019. So on top of all of this, what's really intriguing all has to do with what Bob Chapek has planned. Now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are finished with The Rise of Skywalker, they are now focused on their new Star Wars universe as well as their new Star Wars trilogy of films and more. It's explained that both Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are developing multiple plans in order to reunite the fans around the world to create a better future for the franchise. It's said that Bob Chapek is getting ready to begin development on the four hour cut of The Rise of Skywalker, which is set to include tons of deleted scenes from the original cuts of the movie before Kathleen Kennedy's stepped in and deleted many of those scenes. It's explained that one of the scenes comes from the original ending of the film in which the scene takes place on the world of Exegol that involved the force ghosts of Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, and even Leia in the scene, helping an unconscious Ben Solo. The scene was originally going to involve the Skywalkers that passed on to help the last Skywalker being Ben Solo to get up and fight against Emperor Palpatine for the last time. Ben Solo was best described to be laying on his back on the ground struggling to get up where voices of Anakin, Luke, and Leia would begin to tune in and help give Ben Solo the courage to face Palpatine. Now this entire scene was actually used as inspiration once it was deleted to hand this entire scene over to Rey in a sense. Except in Rey's version, we don't see the Force Ghost, you know, we don't see, you know, the epic actual lightsaber duel, which we'll get into in just a second or two from now. Like I've said before in the past, guys, I think that everything should have been focused more so on the last Skywalker being Ben, and that was one big missed opportunity for the fight against Palpatine. I still never could really understand as to why. You know, at least at the very minimum, Ben could not join Rey to fight in on the battle against Emperor Palpatine in the final cut of the film, but I digress. Now, beyond all of this, this is where the Force Ghosts were going to originally visually appear and place their hands on Ben Solo's back to draw him and to actually draw him energy from the Netherworld of the Force to fight Palpatine. So once again, the Netherworld of the Force was going to have a very big aspect in this particular scene of one of the original cuts of Episode 9. So the Netherworld of the Force, originally J.J. Abrams, what he wanted to do with the actual movie is that he wanted to show the fans exactly what the Netherworld actually looks like. What it actually looks like when the Force goes disappear and go to this destination, to this actual realm, if you will. 
Now, unfortunately, we did not get that in the final cut of the movie, and they were going to kind of tap into that, not just in Colin Trevorrow's version of Episode 9, but also one of the original cuts by J.J. Abrams was going to actually fall into the territory of the netherworld of the Force. And honestly, I think that that would have been very impressive to see on the big screen. Moving on. So this is where, of course, Palpatine would begin to sense a surge of power flowing through Ben Solo where Palpatine would turn his head and see the Skywalkers helping Ben Solo. The brief exchange of Palpatine seeing all the Skywalkers for the first time in years was said to be Ian McDermott's best acting from, of course, the original cut of the film before the scenes got cut by Kathleen Kennedy. It's said that the scene would progress to where Anakin and Luke would smile in a way of taunting Palpatine before they would vanish with Leia's Force Ghost standing last as she gives Ben the dice that once belonged to Han Solo in the sequence. So in case you guys are a little confused right now, you guys may very well recall that in The Last Jedi, Ben Solo, you know, uh, actually had, you know, this moment in which he's holding the dice that disappears. That was basically a vivid imitation of the dice that once belonged to Han Solo that was created by Luke in the particular scene. Luke Skywalker, however, had the authentic dice that once belonged to Han, Ben Solo's father. And the fact that Leia would hand this over to Ben to kind of give it like a message, like fight for your father type of thing, you know, fight for your father for being, you know, uh, manipulated and you yourself being led to killing your own father under lies and manipulation. It is a very interesting segment that could have been on the big screen and would have honestly, I think, given Leia a more meaningful scene at the very end of episode 9 if this actually made the cut. Now, of course, as this all progressed, this is where Palpatine would ignite a double-bladed lightsaber, very much like Maul's in Episode 1, where both Ben and Palpatine would fight to the death on Exegol. So once again, the original cut, or at least one of the cuts, was going to involve a full-on lightsaber duel between the last Skywalker and, of course, the legendary Sith Lord, Darth Sidious. All right. Now, this, of course, is where everything in the scene would eventually transition to a moment in which Ben Solo would receive a wound by Palpatine, where he stabs Ben Solo in the leg, giving him a struggle to walk and fight Palpatine. Eventually, Rey would join the battle with her new yellow-bladed lightsaber that she crafted some time ago before her arrival on Exegol, where it would be a two-on-one battle against Palpatine. This entire sequence would progress to a moment in which Rey gains the upper hand against Palpatine, where in this version of the film, Palpatine was not her grandfather, but rather the very person that created Rey's parents to create the ultimate force user with immense powers. This was Disney's version of Rey Nobody at the time, where she was not connected to Palpatine by blood, however, created by Palpatine as in a sense where, since he was the one responsible for creating her own parents. So this is a very interesting turn of events of how, originally speaking, they were going to tap into the concept of Rey Nobody, where Palpatine was not going to be the grandfather of Rey, but rather the creator of Rey. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this sounds like it's more authentic. It's a little bit more, I guess you could say true to Star Wars in a sense. I mean, I do respect that. JJ tried to keep the aspect of family in the equation here by making Rey the granddaughter of Palpatine. I understand that. But to me, that always felt like it was shoehorned. It really felt like it was a last minute, in which it was. That's all confirmed. That was all last minute material. You know, they really didn't know what they were doing with Rey. They were going back and forth between Rey Nobody, Rey Kenobi, Rey Palpatine, Rey this, Rey that. So, this entire segment at the very end of the film. I think, obviously, the fact that Rey would use a, a yellow-bladed lightsaber, that is very cool. The fact that Ben Solo would use Leia's lightsaber against Palpatine's double-bladed lightsaber in this particular segment. We could have had pretty much a better version, or at least a superior version, to what we got at the very end of Episode 9, without a doubt. And this kind of reminds me of like a little parallel of what happened at the very end of The Phantom Menace between Qui-Gon, Kenobi, and Darth Maul. 
you know, same exact scenario, two on one lightsaber duel, you have a character that has a double bladed lightsaber, it just reminds me of that. And we can see that J.J. Abrams was drawing a lot of ideas from the actual concepts by Colin Trevorrow. He was also going into many different aspects of how Ben and Ray would have scenes together in his version of the movie, Duel of the Fates, against other types of villains out there. So, like I've said before in the past, guys, I think that we honestly, I think, are gonna have a different perception of episode nine once we do get this four hour cut, quote unquote, of episode nine on Disney Plus that is actually aimed for a release sometime in 2023. So Bob Chapek is on a roll. He is really gonna try and make this happen as soon as possible. And it's most likely that we will be getting this Christmas of 23. I can't see it being any earlier than that. You know, so like I said before in the past, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know through all this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.